Hello and welcome. What does it take to bowl a ball that goes at 161.8 kilometers per hour? Well, I can tell you it takes more than just chucking a ball fast. It takes agility, it takes speed and it takes a mind that is putting all of this together and processing it so fast. Let's find out more about this talent and this skill and how it can perhaps help you as I'm joined by Brett Lee, Australian fast pacer. Brett, thank you very much for speaking with us. So Pleasure. You, you've been the world's fastest bowler. And uh, bowling fast, I would imagine, is not just chucking a ball fast. Mm. It means a lot more things. So tell us about how you built yourself to the point that you were able to bowl with the right action, with the right gesture, and uh, be the perfect fast bowler, not just a perfect bowler. Well, I was trying to be the perfect fast bowler, but thank you for your kind words. Look, to me, I've always said that if you want to guide a bowl 160 k's per hour, everyone thinks about action. They think, yeah, and yes, it's front arm, it's, it's the bowling arm. It's the, the pull down, that's very important. But I've always said, what makes a good fast bowler is to be a good sprinter. Mm -hmm. So what I had to do as a young kid was work very, very hard on my sprinting. Now I was very lucky, I was gifted from my mother. She was a sprinter, mm. a uh, 100 meter sprinter. So luckily we got some of her genes mm. and that allowed us to did, get did that. She, did she uh, sprint competitively? Yeah, she went to the Australian titles. Wow. And, um, mm. Up until the age of 12, she used to chase me if I was in trouble and could always, <laughs> always catch me. But uh, at the age of 12, I actually outran mum for the first time and we all sort of laughed about it. But uh, you've got to be a good runner, a good sprinter to be a good fast bowler. Mm -hmm. And then it's about coordination. You know, how do you transfer? It's, it's pure physics. Bowling mm. is physics. It's how do you get that momentum of the cricket ball, the velocity of the cricket ball? How do you carry that down the wicket? How do you... Uh, transfer that into pace. Now it's run up, it's approach, it's a nice solid base, it's a clean action, it's a good follow through, all these things in order to get that missile, that projectile down the, the pitch as fast as possible. Hmm. So a lot of tinkering with the actions and you know a lot of fun along the way as well. Right, so when, when did you sort of start doing this in a very conscious way in, in as much as trying to say that okay where, how do I hmm. become even faster than what I am currently? And you must have faced some sort of hurdles and uh, obstacles in that journey at that point. And how did you get around that? Uh, when I was nine, I wanted to be the world's fastest bowler mm. from the age of nine. So from the age of nine, I, I just worked very, very hard on my bowling. You know, I was never, I couldn't bowl spin, I couldn't bat. Uh, so fast bowling was my only option. So nine, and then I, I reckon about the age of 16 is when I started to bowl pretty quick. You know, I, I was, thrown into first grade cricket up in Sydney mm -hmm. at the age of just turned 16. I'm playing against guys who are twice my age. And that was when I learned about me as a person, but also how I can bowl fast. But it, it comes with a price. You know, bowling quick isn't all uh, fun and games and all rosy. It comes at a cost. And to me, unfortunately, I, I, I broke my lower back twice. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, a doctor who, who told me that I couldn't go and play cricket again. And I had to prove, not only to him, but to me personally, that I can actually do it. And, and you broke that because, or how? Uh, it's, so the spines, you know, imagine a school ruler, a mm. plastic school ruler. And if you get the school ruler and you bend it, and you bend and bend and bend, you'll see a little white little crease line come through. Right. And you bend it and you bend it and eventually it snaps. Mm. So that little crease line is what is a bit like uh, a stress fracture of mm. the spine. Mm. And I had those crease marks happening for a number of years because I had a mixed action or a poor action. You know, I had my legs going one way, my body going the other, uh, trying to bowl too quick at a young age. And then eventually, yeah, that snap of the spine. So I had to go in a brace for 16 weeks. And that was pretty daunting, you know, thinking about, all right, well, I've now got a broken back I've been told I can't bowl fast ever again. And I'm thinking, that's, that's not my dream. That wasn't what I've planned for. So I had to then mentally switch on and get through those tough times. So let me flip the, uh, the question in a way. Mm. So if you were on the other side, how do you face a really fast bowler? I mean, how do you summon the mental courage and the sharpness to? Close your eyes, pray, <laughs> <laughs> and you hope that it actually doesn't hit you in the head. Yeah. Uh, you have got, so if, uh, I'm not sure about your cricketing ability, I'm, you probably look like a number four batsman, yeah. spinner. <laughs> you a spinner? No, a batsman. Oh, batsman, okay. Yeah. I was trying to, trying to give him a rap, see? Yeah. Uh, but you, you've got about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a second. Mm. When I let go of the ball, 
to when the ball either hits your stumps or hits you, right you back. have to work out in your mind and you have to calculate in your mind as a batsman, mm. how do I actually deal with this ball? Uh, what shot I have to play? And that's why the guys like Sachin Tanduka, Brian Lara, um, MS Dhoni, Virat Kohli, Lakshman, I mean, I could go through the whole Indian team, amazing players of fast bowling. But it's just, they think so quickly. And the reflex time is, is so sharp, which is why predominantly bowlers that focus on bowling the ball aren't as good as batting because we haven't worked on our reflexes. That's interesting. And, and how do you, can you train yourself to uh, respond faster or build better reflexes? And I'm talking about in that point 0.3 to point 0.6. From a, from a batting perspective? Yeah, from a batting you perspective. can, you can, mm. but it's also, um, how come you're good at your job? It's because you're obviously very passionate about it. You've also got some natural ability. You know, you're probably a smart guy being in finance and being in that, that sector. So you're you're trained, but you're also gifted in a certain way. It's, it's the same as a sports person. You're gifted naturally, and then it's where you want to take that gift. So you can get a person off the street that wouldn't be able to catch a ball, but over some training, they'll be able to catch a ball eventually. But will they be able to catch that ball the same way Ricky Ponting would catch it? Probably not, because hmm. it comes, comes down to natural talent too. Right. And, and I'm, I'm sure you work with a lot of youngsters mm. who want to become like you. And, and what do you tell them? As in, what are the first things that you tell them? And then how do you take them from there? Enjoyment. Mm. That is, my, my son's 12, loves his cricket, loves Virat Kohli and mm. uh, Sachin Tanduka. But I just tell him that you've got to enjoy this wonderful game of cricket. Cricket's given me this amazing life. I've met so many friends. Uh, you know, I get to come over here to India to commentate on the Indian Premier League on, on Test Match Cricket and, and keep doing something that I love. But it's because I love and I'm, I'm passionate about cricket. So the first thing I say to children is respect the game, learn about the game, but love the game. Just enjoy it. And it's funny that when you enjoy doing something, you become a lot better at it. Right. And would you say the same thing to adults? I mean, people who are maybe later on, later stage in life, who also want to do something better than what they're doing all this while, become faster at what they're doing something? In terms of sport or life in general? In life in general. Yeah, look, you've, you've also got to challenge yourself. Now, you and I both know that the easy option sometimes is the, the way to go. And what I mean by that, you think, well, I might go for a run today. I could run 2Ks. I probably could run four, but I might do two because it's easy. Uh, you know, instead of walking down to the bus stop today, I'll, I'll get a lift down to the bus stop. It's the easy option. Now, we've all done it, and I'll put my hand up and say, I've also taken that easy option on occasions, but you need to challenge yourself every single day, mentally, physically. So when you get out of bed, you've got to go to yourself, how can I become, firstly, a better person than, than, I'm what, than what I was yesterday? And how can I inspire other people as well as me to keep aiming for new things so if you asked me seven years ago would i want to be a commentator i would have said no way that I, I can't do that i can't get up and speak in front of people i can't you know uh, do a coin toss i can't go and do a pitch report to two billion people no way but when you find out it and you actually challenge yourself and you get thrown in the deep end sometimes it's amazing what you can achieve and you can achieve anything I, I, I do truly believe that, I know it's a cliche, but I reckon if you're passionate, now if you tell me now that, okay, um, Brett, I, you know, I want you to learn about um, finance and, and, and sort of go down that sector. Now I could upskill myself to a certain extent, but I'm not passionate about it. So if I was passionate, I could learn a lot more because you, you know, want to learn more every single day. Right. So you've been, uh, uh, you've been sort of, uh, talk, I mean, you've been talking about mm. finding the fastest Indian <coughs> bowler. So tell us about that uh, effort, or uh, how do you see that panning out or shaping up? Well, I've been really, really impressed. Probably the last 12 months. Uh, if you go 12 months ago, or, you know, I would have said Indian pace is probably not where it should be. It's around that 135k an hour, and we as commentators, unfortunately, get sucked into to saying that's fast, that's good bowling, good pace good aggression, 135Ks, but that's not quick. You know, I reckon I could bowl 135Ks with these shoes on now. <laughs> Probably couldn't, but I, I'm, I'm saying I could. But look, it's, it's now, India's at a stage now where they've got three or four guys that can tip the scale over 145Ks. 145 is good pace. 
So you've got the likes of uh, Saini. You know, I've been really impressed with him. Pratik Krishna is another bowler. Now, Prasid's the type of guy that he's tall, he's got, he's got good pace, he's got nice bounce off the wicket, he's young, he's learning. That excites me about Indian cricket because you've got raw pace. You can harness raw pace. It's very hard to get a guy from 130 up to 150 when he's bowling well at 130. He'll always have that at 150, but it's, it's, it's so hard to get that pace. But you can get a guy at 145 that's spraying the ball everywhere hmm. and make him become a better bowler because he's naturally got that raw pace. Right. And uh, last question. So there's a World Cup <coughs> coming up. So who are you Who's going to win? Yes. Do you think India Jetiga <laughs> or Australia Jetiga? <laughs> India Jetiga. Uh, look, I think b both our wonderful um, nations have got a good chance. I, I, I think firstly Australia have got a, a good chance. Warner's, Warner's back, Smith's back. Uh, you know, we need some, you know, I, I've, I've, I've always said that batsmen can win you games but bowlers win you tournaments. Mm. So to me, it's the team that's got the, the, bet, the best uh, spinners that can bowl through that middle period and the best uh, death bowlers. And both Australia and, and India have got some good death bowlers now. So I think they're, they're both a good chance. So I, I don't know who will win it. I don't want to predict too early on, but uh, Australia and India will be definitely you know, a good chance. Right, right, right. Well played. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. What up, mate?